Hi guys and welcome to another video. So today I'm going to do something that's been highly requested but hopefully I do a good job because I don't think I'm very good at explaining things but so many people have asked me to compile a list of my kind of essential oil painting supplies. I know a lot of you guys watching my channel are still new to oil painting or maybe haven't even tried at all and you just want to know kind of a list, almost a shopping list of what supplies to get to even get started. So I'm gonna try my best to show you guys my essential oil painting supplies and why they're important and what they're used for and where you can buy them. So first up, pretty obvious, you need oil paint. I am a huge fan of Gamblin. This is one of my favorite brands, probably my top favorite brand. You can find Gamblin, I think they sell at Michael's now. Um, I get them online from Blix, which is I think a United States only um, art supply store. But Gamblin, the reason why I like their paints, not only is it because they're high quality, but also I feel like their color range is very unique. Um, I'm able to always use or find like really, really vibrant colors that are very modern and kind of catered to the, the modern artist in a way. So Gamblin is my favorite brand of oil paints. Aside from oil paints, the second obvious thing is you will need brushes, woo! So for brushes, there are two main types, actually three main types that I really recommend. Um, first one is, I think this is called a flat brush. And it's basically when the, the tip is straight across, so it's almost like a rectangle or a square. And these are great for color blocking, filling in large areas. They're also good for creating thin lines when you turn them to the side and thick strokes when you turn them to the front. Um, this one I got from Royal and Langnickel, which is a really high quality um, brush brand. But of course you can always find more affordable alternatives. If you go to art stores, there's always like artist grade, studio grade, and student grade. So the student grade ones are a lot more affordable. Um, the second shape that, uh, this is my favorite one to use is, oh my gosh, come on camera, there we go. It's called Filbert and it's kind of like this rounded top, so it's like a half oval. And this one is great too, you can also turn it to the side to make thinner lines, but um, this one I just find with painting portraits and petals and things that are very organic in shape, for me at least, this is my favorite. I think every artist has their own preference, but mine is the Filbert for sure. This one is also from Royal and Nickel, and it's their Pure Red Sable line. So Pure Red Sable is basically describing the type of hair. Um, this has just been my favorite to use over the years. It's, it's held up really well and the strokes that it produces are very consistent and clean. And then the last shape that I really recommend is this liner. It's like a script liner brush. This is great for little details like hair or eyelashes or freckles or, you know, grass, stars. So any small details, um, you need a tiny, tiny brush. This one, again from Royal and Lanical, it's the Zen line and it's in size 20 over zero. So yeah, I think if you have those three shapes, you should be set and try to get brushes in a variety of sizes. But I would say that more often than not, based on my experience, I end up using the smaller brushes more. So if you only have the budget to get a finite number of brushes, um, I would say spend less money on the large ones and invest more into the tiny brushes because at least if you do paintings like the way I do them, um, the small ones get used way more. Next up is a palette. So this is one of my old palettes. It's been dried. Um, I actually got the idea for creating these palettes from my friend Lena Danya. So if you haven't checked out her channel yet, be sure to check her out. Just look up Lena Danya on YouTube. She's amazing. And she put out this video years ago with this neat trick of basically taking picture frame glasses, like the glass part of the picture frame that you don't use, and gluing like a sheet of white paper to the back and then they turn into palettes. And they're way more affordable than glass palettes that you would buy at an art store, you know. They're technically free if you already bought the frame and used it for something and you don't need the glass. And I just took some like clear tape and I taped a sheet of paper to the back. So um, palettes you might not even need to buy if you have some glass lying around. But if you do want to buy them you can get wooden palettes, plastic palettes. For oil paint, I recommend glass palettes because they're easy to scrape off 
and um, you can reuse them if you have like a glass scraper. You will also need something to paint on, a painting surface. So you can get canvases, you can get wood panels, you can get different types of panels. My absolute number one favorite surface to paint on is gesso board. The brand is Ampersand, and I think you can get these online at various retailers. I know Blick has them, and I think Jerry's Artorama has them. Um, I don't know if Michael's carries this brand, or at least I don't know if they carry gesso board, but I think if you just go on Google and search for it, you'll find many places that can carry it. These are slightly pricier than, let's say, like canvases. Um, but I found that they're actually cheaper than primed wood panels, so they're kind of like medium-high price. But for me, they're just my favorite surface to paint on there. It's super smooth, it absorbs the paint at a perfect frequency, and um, it's just kind of been my go-to lately. If you cannot afford gesso board, there is a more affordable alternative. I think it's just called Artist Board, and it's also by the brand, I think, um, I don't know if um, Ampersand makes it, but artist boards come in various brands and there's one I got from Michaels. I think it was called like the Mona Lisa brand or something. There was like a Mona Lisa logo on it. Anyways, don't worry. I will look it up and I will put the brand names and everything in the description. So, but artist boards are slightly more affordable. They kind of feel like gesso boards in terms of like they're thin and easy to frame, but the surface I found is not as absorbent as gesso board. So you do kind of end up smearing paint around and it's just, for me, not as organic and natural, but they are definitely more affordable. So, you know, if you're just beginning and you want to practice, but you still want something high quality and sturdy to paint on, I really recommend artist board or artist panels. Um, but yeah, I will have all the descriptions of the materials in the description below so you guys can refer it. Okay, so now that you have your paint, your brushes, and your palette, there's still a very important ingredient missing and that is paint thinner. So you need a way to dilute and wash and thin your paint and you need also a way to clean your brushes and this baby right here, Gamzol, solves all of those problems. Um, there are definitely alternatives out there. You can just get paint thinner from Home Depot or Turpanoid, Turpentine, or any sort of mineral spirits, but Gamsol is my favorite because it's the safest, or safest and it is the most odorless. So in terms of just how pleasant it is to use, um, it's definitely my number one favorite. And you can get this Again, either online or if you have an art store near you, they usually carry this. Um, but if not, some alternative brands are Turpanoid, which is a very similar product. But for me, um, Gamsol is my go-to. One really important thing, I really do recommend you guys splurge and actually buy this product instead of getting just like a regular glass jar. This is called a Silly Coil Jar. I've featured it many times in a lot of my videos. It is for me, integral in the painting process. And the reason is, it is just a glass jar with the lid that you put your paint thinner into, but um, it has this coil, I don't know if you can see it, this coil on the inside, and you can scrape your brush against the coil to help get the pigment off, and it just cleans it so efficiently. And um, you can also just wait for the oil paint sediment to kind of eventually separate to the bottom, and there's always a layer of clean paint thinner on top. So it just makes the whole cleaning process a lot easier. And I think online they only cost about five to seven dollars um, for United States. So definitely a worthy investment in my opinion. Also, you will need some sort of way to wipe and clean your paint. Um, some artists use like actual fabric rags and then some artists use just paper towels that you get at home. My favorite product is something in between. It's basically an industrial strength paper towel, so it's blue in color and it's a lot thicker and sturdier than a normal paper towel. And the reason why I like this is because I can reuse it and I don't have to waste as much money um, buying paper towels all the time because when I use regular household paper towels, they don't, they're not very sturdy. Like they, they break or the fiber comes apart or you know, if you put paint thinner on it, it just gets completely soaked. This one, um, it at least in my experience, the paint thinner will dry overnight and I can reuse it um, many, many times. I pretty much use it until it's filled with color and you know, I can no longer um, let it dry and reuse. But this has lasted me a long time. I bought three rolls about 
three years ago and I'm still not done. I still have two full rolls left. So if you use it wisely, it can really last you a long time. And I got this one at Home Depot. Mediums. Mediums are actually optional. If you're just starting out, I wouldn't force you to try to learn how to use mediums. They kind of come later as a way to basically make the paint more spreadable and easier to work with and slightly more transparent. So if you're just starting out and you're a beginner, I actually would recommend to just put mediums aside until later. But if you are looking to use mediums, my favorite one of all time is the Gamblin Solvent Free Gel Medium. And it is my favorite because it's pretty much like like butter. It just makes everything so soft and spreadable and it adds like a nice gloss shine to your piece and it's perfect for glazing. Um, or if you have paint that's a little bit old and kind of tacky, um, you can just put a little bit of medium in there to make it just easier to work with and you know give it that that viscosity again. And then of course this is optional, but uh, varnish. So once you're done with your piece, you can seal it with a coat or two coats of varnish to help protect your piece and even out the sheen and make it beautiful and glossy and luminous and you know enrich the colors, deepen the shadows. So my go-to varnish is also from Gamblin. Sorry, I'm kind of a Gamblin fangirl. Um, but the thing about Gamvar, which is the Gamblin varnish that I like, is that you don't have to wait too long for your pieces to dry. Um, prior to Gamblin, I was using this other brand, I think it was Utrecht, U Utrecht? Sorry, I don't know the, how to pronounce it, but that one required you to wait three to six months after your painting dries in order to varnish them. And this one, you only need to wait a week after your painting is dried to the touch. And based on my experience, it's never ruined a painting. Um, sometimes, I think like if you use, um, when you varnish, you've got to use like soft, gentle strokes. So if you use brush strokes that are too hard, you might damage your painting. But with this, if you wait a week after your painting is dried to the touch and you use soft, gentle brush strokes to varnish, in my, in my experience, it's never failed me and it's always given me a beautiful result. And um, for gallery shows and clients, I always like to put varnish on the pieces just to give it that extra layer of protection. So. This is my go-to varnish. So yeah, these are my go-to essential oil painting supplies. I think in general, um, if you're just starting out with oil painting, you really only really need um, oil paint, brushes, palette, and a silly coil jar. Um, you can definitely re like replace a lot of the other extra items. Like you know, you don't have to get the fancy industrial shrink paper towels. You can get, you can just use your paper towels at home. Um, you really don't need to use mediums yet if you're just starting out. Um, you can definitely layer and stuff without the use of mediums. And also, um, in terms of painting surfaces, like you don't have to get a fancy gesso board. You can find alternatives. Um, you can always go to Home Depot and just get like wood panels and prime them with gesso and use them. So there are many cost saving alternatives to a lot of these supplies. I know oil paints can get expensive, but I will say that um, I'll just conclude with, I think in terms of your paint and your brushes, I would not compromise on quality for those because really, really crappy oil paint feels completely different from like legitimate oil paint. And I think if you want to really learn the medium and make the most of it, you really, it is worth it to invest in actual good quality oil paint. Um, many brands like Gamblin brand, Winsor & Newton, um, the Blick kind of studio brand, they always offer a student grade, which is cheaper than the artist grade, but still doesn't compromise quality that much. I would, I would never buy oil paints from like Walmart or um, you know, from a non like art store. So yeah, that is my tip. But I hope you guys found this useful and thank you so much for watching me blabber on. I'm really sorry if I'm really terrible at explaining, but I will leave all of the materials in the, de in the description below along with where to purchase them. And so, yeah, in case you guys miss something in the dialogue, at least you always have the description to rely on. And um, thank you so much for watching and for your support. And I hope you have a lovely day. Bye. I used to.